watching Liquid Lunch on Newsmax TV. Happy Halloween. I'm Frank Moreno here with President Donald John Trump sitting in for John Tobacco. And everybody all over the country from coast to coast, shore to shore, is talking about what's happening in California with respect to these wildfires. And apparently early reports are indicating that a faulty PG&E transmission tower may have caused the Kincaid fire. Uh, here to help us learn a little bit more about it, we're very pleased to be joined by Lawrence McQuillan of the Independent Institute. Uh, Mr. McQuillan, thanks so much for joining us on Newsmax. It's great to be with you. So uh, just so folks know, what exactly is the Independent Institute? Are you guys liberal? Are you conservative? Are you libertarian? Are you authoritarian? What's your deal? Well, we're a nonpartisan educational think tank that leans uh, pro-market and uh, probably libertarian on some issues, conservative on others. All right, fair enough. So what, do you, what can we learn from what happened in California if indeed these reports that the PG&E uh, transmission tower may have caused this fire? What do we need to know about this? Well, I think it, it's just more evidence that for decades, California utilities, and in particular PG&E, hasn't been doing the due diligence and proper maintenance that they need to do to prevent these fires. And as a result, we're paying the price now of decades of mismanagement, both by PG&E, but also by federal and state government here in terms of proper management of the forest lands in the state. So um, it sounds like California could be a cautionary tale to places like New York and other places that are inclined to pursue green policies. Is that fair to say? Right. I mean, I think there's a lot that other states can learn from us uh, about how not to do this uh, correctly. Um, and one is that um, we've, I think, limited private property owners too much in California to clear, you know, excess fuels, vegetation, dead trees, that sort of thing from their property. Um, there's lots of rules and regulations out here, uh, primarily around the California Environmental Quality Act that limits the ability of private property owners to properly maintain their land. Um, and another thing that they do is they limit prescribed burns or controlled burns and other types of burning of excess vegetation on your property um, because it causes unhealthy air quality, as they put it. So the local um, air quality districts prevent that sort of built, uh, burning. But as we know, it's the cheapest way to ma properly maintain and remove excess fuels it can be done safely, um, and obviously a wildfire creates a lot more CO2 and a lot more unhealthy air than prescribed burns do. Well, I can't imagine any California politician, irrespective of ideology, wants to see more of these wildfires. Why aren't more California politicians heeding the kind of warnings that you're talking about? I've told them. Well, I mean, I think it's due to the capture from the Green Lobby here in California. I mean, they have a lot of influence over state legislators over the governor, both Jerry Brown in the past and the current governor, Governor Gavin Newsom. Um, they have a lot of influence over the regulators, the California Public Utilities Commission. Um, so they're basically kind of been captured over time by the green lobby that doesn't want to see um, these natural forest land and natural California disturbed. But of course, um, a wildfire creates a lot of damage to a, to a natural environment. So I think um, hopefully over time there's going to be a shifting of attitudes and views on this. Um, I think we're starting to see a little bit of that with uh, Governor Newsom is issuing some waivers for the California Environmental Quality Act that will allow some uh, local community um, fire management activities to take place. For example, vegetation clearing and that sort of thing. So we're starting to see a little bit pullback, but these waivers are piecemeal. You know, they're project by project. So if we're going to fix this problem, we're going to have to do thousands and thousands of these um, projects, not just uh, right now they've okayed 35. I mean, that's not nearly enough. So we, we need to really change how we go about thinking about this problem and doing it at a much grander scale than we're currently doing. Mr. President, we all know you hate the environment, isn't that right? Well, uh, I love the environment, I love America, I love uh, borders. If we don't have borders, we don't have a country, and uh, when we have borders, then we can protect our country. I've told Gavin Newsom many times, uh, 
when I spoke to the king of uh, Finland, they have to clean up all the all the branches, all the tidbits on the bottom. They have to burn them off. This guy uh, you have here, Lawrence, he's a good guy, very good guy. I like, like what he's saying. Uh, I like it. Mr. Not partisan Mr. Stuff. McClellan, before we let you go, let me ask you about another problem that seems uh, all too real in both California and New York. It's a problem of homelessness. Why has uh, homelessness gotten so out of control in cities like San Francisco, Los Angeles, and I'll add New York? Well, they don't, number one, I mean, they don't enforce vagrancy laws, um, and, and especially in the major metropolitan areas of Los Angeles and San Francisco. Um, number two is there over decades, there's been a systematic eradication of low income housing in the urban areas in California. So they've decimated uh, boarding houses, rooming houses, SROs that used to accommodate a lot of low income people. So even if you can pull yourself up and can maintain a job, there's no plausible place for you to go to live in a lot of these communities. Um, and so, therefore, the people live on the street or they live in, in tent cities um, scattered around the Bay Area and, and also in the Los Angeles area. Uh, Lawrence McQuillan, I want to thank you very, very much. If people want to check out some of uh, your commentary, they can go to theindependent.org. I hope you'll come back and visit us again soon. Thank you so much. I would appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. You're watching uh, Liquid Lunch on Newsmax TV. In just a couple of minutes, we're going to be joined by the Sacconi brothers, who are going to be telling us about some fascinating, fascinating apparel that you may like, Mr. President. But dumb ass apparel is amazing. That's all. I